Man, See, here's what I love is the party. fact that, uh, you know, the, oh, hey, 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 wait. Oh, never mind. I got a good bore. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I was like, wait. I Troy's, Troy's like, no, I didn't. I didn't take it all. I didn't I don't take it all. want it. Dude, that is kind of how it's designed perfectly, though. Look at this; it won't go in. <laughs> that is how it has been all week with these guys. So, uh, our happy hour last call today <laughs> as we wrap up this entire week of drinking with our friends from Belching Beaver. Troy and Mark have been absolute just peaches in the studio as we've uh, introduced a couple of new beers, uh, a couple of new formats. Um, one of those I'm I'm still tripping off of. We did it on. Uh, did it on Wednesday. It was the Terps, which was kind of the brainchild of this man sitting right here, Troy. Um, the 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 just cro- tropical dankness of it, I cannot get over. Ah, and why you how how you decided to do you know terpenes with your your beer is is, is kind of genius, dude. It's all about thinking outside the box these days. What hasn't been done? What hasn't been created? And. Uh, and, and or what has been done and what wasn't done correctly. I don't know. I would like to maybe think this is done right. Uh, I would agree with you because, honestly, I, I really want more of that. And I know you're doing the the, the whole 12-ounce thing, but, uh, you know, six months down the road, if we can get Terps in a 19-2, I would say, okay, I'll, I'll drink that. Well, you're speaking to the salesman <laughs> right the reason, there. I'm, I'm looking at Mark for that specific reason because I know he's like, he's the one who has to got, move the product. Mm-hmm. He's the creative genius, he being Troy, and then Mark has to move it. I got to tell you, I love genius. the 19.2 segment. I love this kind of revolution in packaging that's been happening because back when we broke out in the scene 2012, uh, 22s were all the rage, right? People yeah, it was would bombers. go to the store, pick up a couple bombers, share them with friends. It became experiential, and that's what kind of, I think, brought in this whole new wave of craft beer enthusiasts that we have today and 192s are kind of a next step in that direction where you're getting a nice big format and that's why we're releasing <laughs> things that are about 14 <laughs> percent all right so the beer we're about to get into you know. in, in a few moments is actually yeah. being released in that same format but you know we've got uh, we've got other brews uh that have debuted in that like uh hazer's gonna haze which mm-hmm. we rolled out this one you've had, you've had out for a couple of months now uh which is my favorite the the phantom bride i wish my liquor store would carry this like this the, the fact that i can't grab this where i'm at drives me insane give me their name i will 100 <laughs> percent. and then this one you introduced me to i had not tried the fall of troy until yesterday mm. and i saved the can for a reason because it is Mind-blowingly good at eight and a half percent in Imperial uh, India Pale Ale IPA with orange vanilla. Mm. The, I think the, the thing that the really shocked me about this was how much the pithiness you got off the orange in the back end. Mm-hmm. I really thought it was like sixty-minute hops giving me that, like Chinook that had been in there for sixty to ninety minutes, just burning my tongue. Boiled it was, to no, death. It was the pithiness <laughs> of that 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 orange rind. There ain't no Chinook at our brewery. No. No, it's gone. I, it's gone with the wind. Can, can I bring some for an experimental brew? No me gusta. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So. Nah, you know, there's a, there's a there's a place for everything, but no. Um, right now it's just currently not in there, and most all of our beers don't have many sixty minute editions. The only one that really does right now is uh, No Worries, and that's that's you know trying to bring back some of the traditional bitterness and stuff in an IPA. Uh, I love this pack, by the way. This. Uh, this damn good IPA pack is just jam packed with some damn good IPAs. The No Worries being one of them, the uh, the Phantom Bride being another. Also, um, Fall of Troy, and then can can we please just stop? I know you call it a rotating hazy, but you have literally hit perfection with haze. Just gonna haze right now. It is incredible how it's been coming out, but you know I'm excited to see what they keep working up at out there on the brew pad. No, right? I, I mean they're not no. cr- they're not crazy changes. You know, there's just <laughs> when one thing kind of settles out or your hop contract runs out. You try and replace it with something cool, unique, and exciting. And, of course, it gets piloted, and if it's not meeting the mark, I guess we're just going to have to find that hop again. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's go back to that last one. We know that worked. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, we're coming up on time for this last beer. I'm, I'm so ready for you to tell me exactly, because uh, we, we tried something similar to this about a year ago. This one is, year um, ago, exactly. What, what is the, the overall name of it? Because I didn't write it down. The Branded this and Barreled? Is- Yes, branded and barreled is a hop series that we do in uh, you right, know, don't, the format don't, of. Don't, don't get into it yet. We're gonna well, hold on. I gotta get the intro going first. <laughs> and <laughs> it's tasty. I got them all wound up before it's time. Ready? 
Here we are. It is a Friday night. I'm sitting here with my friends from Belching Beaver, Troy and Mark, as uh, we have finally got to our last beer of the evening. And, you know, I use the term beer loosely because at 14%, this is almost a damn wine. Yeah, we partnered with uh, Valvoline on this motor oil. <laughs> <laughs> that right there, that's a, that's a 40W10 right there. That's, that's, there's, there's no tolerance in them gears, I'll tell you what right now. I mean, this is... This is some serious, uh, some serious dark matter here. Oh, oh, it's goodness. Oh, yeah. This oh. comes out of our branded and barrel series, which we've been doing for about the past year over at our original brewing spot in Vista, our Pub 980. Uh, that's where Peter Paraconi, he's our our barrel master, does all of our kind of cool stout barrel aged stuff. Oh my God, uh, this is the fourth edition of the branded and barrel series. This is banana pancakes, about fourteen and a half percent. You got real bananas in there, Ugandan vanilla beans, maple syrup, aged in a blend of, I believe it's Blanton's, Old Fitzgerald. Yep. Yeah. And some Forrester? Uh, Valvoline. Valvoline. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tell you about Valvoline instant oil change, your 15 minute or less drive through oil change. <laughs> Holy God. <laughs> Um, Fifteen minutes in your sleep, mm, no, uh, dude. At fourteen percent, if I if I did if I drank the rest of this glass, uh, I would be asleep. This is uh, amazing. Makes it's, your toe hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's called the gout. It's good. The gout. <laughs> it is good. Oh my god, dude! The banana in this, and then the, the the funny thing is, what was the one we tried a year ago? Because it had chocolate notes in it. Yeah, it was uh, a banana, peanut butter, and chocolate. Yes. Oh yeah, that came yeah. out almost like yeah. uh, sweet, like banana bread. Yes. This is this is very very banana up front, but I mean the the whatever barrels you've aged this in, the they bourbon did the job. is just they did kicking the job. chicken. Yeah. Mm. Um, when you open those uh, those fruit jugs with the banana in there, I don't know exactly. Or not, well, first off, I ain't telling you what kind of banana is this in them. It tastes like banana pudding. I believe it's it. It's insane. Insane. I mean, this, this, this is another one of those mash tons you take a bath in. <laughs> yeah, oh, they're, they're beer That's angels great. of Troy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The uh, the barrel aged pastry stouts we've been having coming out have just been nailing it every single time. And uh, later here uh, this March, we're going to be having the last edition of the Brandon and Barrel. It was always planned to be like a five uh, series. The last one is using Mexican chocolate. And so we will be seeing some new 192s on that here later. Oh, Mm -hmm. curse you for putting these in 192s, by the way, because it's always the conversation about people buying 192s because of either crushability or ABV. Mm -hmm. And at 14%, um, I mean, the sad thing about this is it's it's crushingly high ABV. Yes. And I've literally taken four sips, and I'm already warm because of it. Well, that's back to the uh, experiential piece we were talking about in a bit of the preamble is the bombers 22s you used to be able to share them and then the 192s have seemed to be those more single serves but here again you get to break it apart amongst friends enjoy talk about the beer three beautiful friends drinking this and we're all buzzed up (laughs) (laughs) well you know we still have um a lot of my glass left and a lot in that 192 to uh to finish off so let's pair this with one with one song what did you do to me, Troy? Let's put this with one song as we wrap things up for our Friday. With his, uh, with his deep and dark and dirty and amazing as this beer is, we're going to do some Royal Blood. Here's Out of the Black. Yeah. Oh, baby. All right. <laughs> I have nothing to say to you. <laughs> Everything I want to say, I need to say to him right now. So um, next week, I have no idea who's going to be in the hot seat. We'll have to find out. It's uh, one of those fly by the seat of my pants type of things, and I'm going to send a lot of emails out while I uh, finish the rest of this. And, uh, you know, Troy gives me some contact info. Valvoline. (laughs) (laughs) See you later.